Hi, this is Kristen from Hammock Haven Farm, and this is Julia. Say hi, Julia. Today we're going to be talking about mozzarella. Now, this is going to, this is going to be a 30-minute mozzarella, which takes a little closer to an hour. Um, but it's a recipe using citric acid, and it's supposed to be really easy. And when I started making it with cow milk, it was really easy. And so when we got our own goats, I started making the mozzarella with our goat milk, and it didn't work. And what's the point of milking your goats twice a day if you can't even have pizza? Because if you ask one of my sons, he would tell you that pizza is life. So um, I wasted a whole lot of milk trying to figure out how to do this. So I'm going to share my secrets with you. And, uh, and then we'll go in the kitchen and we'll actually make some, some homemade mozzarella. We are back inside and I've defuzzed myself the best I can. She was shedding. Um, I've got everything sterilized here. I sterilized my pot and my utensils by boiling a small amount of water in there for several minutes. Um, I've taken two gallons of my raw goat milk and put it in this pot. Now what we want to do with the, goat, with the milk still cold is we want to take uh, citric acid. I just got this at the health food store. We need two and a half teaspoons of citric acid mixed in about half a cup of water. So let me measure this out. I've got a bowl of water here already. So let's see. One. There's some pumps in there. Two. Three. Four. Five. All right, let me mix this up. If you make a mistake and you add the citric acid to warm milk, you're going to end up curdling your milk, and it's not going to come out like you expected. Um, I've done it before. Speak from experience here. So once you got that, put this in here in your cold milk, and then put your thermometer in, and slowly raise your temperature on this to 86 degrees. Like with all my cheeses, I set my, I've got like these digital thermometers that you can set the temperature on. I always set it to go off a couple of degrees cooler because uh, the residual heat in the pan is going to go ahead and, and heat it up the rest of the way. So I'll get back with you when we get this to temperature. We've made it to 86 degrees. Um, this is going to be an optional step. This is lipase powder and it just adds a little bit of flavor. Um, I'm going to put about a sixteenth of a teaspoon in here. Just float that on the top. Um, if you put too much, it makes it so the curd doesn't set as firmly, and we don't want that, but I just like a tiny bit of flavor. Now I've got my bowl with a little bit of water back in it over here. I need a half a teaspoon of rennet, single strength animal rennet is what I'm using. Mix that with my water and dump that into my milk. Stir that up real well. And you're going to want to put a lid on it and set a timer for 20 minutes. In that time it should set to a nice custard texture where you're getting a clean break. And I'll be back at that point to cut the curds and show you how that's done. It's been 20 minutes now and if you look down in this pot you'll see that it's pulling away from the sides. We've got a good clean break on our curd. It's time to cut these curds, and I'm going to cut them into big pieces, about an inch and a half. I want to leave plenty of whey and moisture and everything else in here. The big problem I found with a lot of the other recipes is you're losing all the butter fat out of your curds. I think the, the bonds in this goat milk aren't quite as strong as the bonds in some cow milk. And it doesn't hold on to that butter fat quite as well. You cut it this way very, very gently. Just be very careful working this. And once I've got this all cut into big chunks, I'm going to let it sit for another 10 minutes. So lid back on. See you in 10. I'm just going to give this one little stir around kind of lift these curds off the bottom and then take this pot and go put it in a sink of hot water. I, I filled the sink up and I want to leave it over there until it gets to about 105 degrees. If your tap water isn't really hot coming out of the tap then you're going to want to heat some water on the stove and put it on there so that it heats up. 
you should be able to get it to 105 degrees in about 45 minutes or so. So I'm going to stick this in the stove, or, or stick, this in, eh, bah, stick this in the sink, and I'll be back when we get to temperature. I forgot to add, while it's sitting in the sink, don't stir it. All the other recipes will say stir every five minutes or stir this whole time. Stirring it is going to lead you to that snot I was talking about at the beginning of this video. Leave it, forget it, just check the temperature, no stirring. See you in a few. It's been about 45 minutes. This has been in the sink. The water in the sink has been about 120 degrees, and I've got this heated up to 105 now. I'm going to reach in here. All my curds have formed a mat on the bottom. I'm just going to grab that mat of curds out and put it in a bowl or a colander inside of a bowl and let that sit there and drain for 15 minutes, and we'll come back and salt it. It's time to salt this and um, stretch it now. So I'm just using kosher salt, and for this two gallon batch, I'll probably want about a tablespoon. I'm just gonna eyeball it um, and guess about, about that much. Uh, work the salt into our curd that's drained here. And work it in slowly, try to get it all around on there. You can break up your curd now. And at this point, this is absolutely delicious. So, take a bite of it, check for salt. Oh, this has come off. Basically like cream. This is delicious in cooking in any kind of cream sauce or anything. Or you can throw it back in the pot and uh, with the other way and make ricotta out of it. But that's a different video. I'm not doing that today, but just an FYI. So we're probably going to make, I don't know, five balls of mozzarella from what we've got here. Just kind of going to make them even. So take about a fifth of this and put it on a plate. I'm going to go microwave it for 30 seconds. I'm going to do 15 seconds and then another 15 seconds. Um, so in between I'm going to kind of just stir it over so it doesn't get too hot on the edges. And I'll be right back after I get this microwave. All right, this was nice and warm, so I actually only heated it for about 25 seconds altogether. Now, you've probably seen cow videos where they just pull this stuff forever. You will break the protein bonds in this if you try to work it too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it one little nice stretch, find a pretty side, fold it under until you've got a nice smooth top and a nice round ball. You can use the hot way to seal the bottom. But you do not want to overwork this. If you overstretch it, you're going to break those bonds and they're not going to go back. And you're also going to lose butter fat the more you work this. Once you've got it in a shape you want, dump it in the cold water to hold your shape. It is possible to overheat your curd. You see around this edge where it's starting to overheat a little bit? You're not going to be able to pull that. So really watch it while you're heating it up. I'm just going to mix that really hot bit in the middle to cool it down. Once I've got the heat all the way through, I'm kind of uniform, giving a nice one stretch, not too far, and fold it under. Give these, I don't know, 30 minutes or so to cool down in your ice bath. I'm going to add some ice cubes to that. Right now it's just cool water. It's not going to stay cool very long. Um, then you can put it on a cheese mat on a rack to, to dry off and then they're ready to just slice and eat. So thank you for watching. Let me know if you've got any questions in the comments. I'll be happy to answer you. Um, I'll also help you troubleshoot if you run into any problems. And uh, good luck making your mozzarella. See you later.